Hey guys, I am Damesies. Welcome to the Omnic Recap. Time is a ruthless companion, my friends. It is always moving forward. And all we can do is try and catch up. In other words, I just feel like the summer just started, but we're already halfway to August, and I didn't even hit one single of my hot Viking summer goals. All of those goals include ice cream, by the way. Not that way. The one thing that eases the pain a little is that we're also closing in on the release of Overwatch 2 on October 4th. Now before a hopefully huge tidal wave of information starts rolling in, I wanted to take the time and look at what content for Overwatch 2 we already know about, what rumors are going around, what would be cool to have at some point, but also what we should not expect. Ever. And in this first video in the series, I want to take a look at cosmetics. If there's anything that we learned from playing all these years of Overwatch, and especially in the last two years where nothing happened, it is that we as a community love new content. And I'm not only talking about heroes, maps, or modes. Cosmetics are also an important part of what keeps bringing us back to Overwatch. And especially in the future, progressing to a battle pass is a lot less fun with the rewards that you unlock along the way. And Blizzard, they know that. They know that the loot that will drop from the battle pass will play a huge role in the player's decision to cough over that 10 bucks every single season. In other words, it's going to be a deciding factor in the amount of money that they see coming in. And the same goes for the shop, by the way. And when we're talking cosmetics, we're not just talking about skins. If you want a successful shop or enough rewards to fill 100 levels for a battle pass, then you need to diversify, which they are actually doing. We've seen proof of that. But let's start at the beginning. What type of cosmetics do we have right now in Overwatch 1. Well, the obvious one here is of course the skins. Some heroes have more skins than others, but at this point the look of your character is the main reward in Overwatch. Now ironically enough, you don't get to enjoy that yourself, which is a classic issue with skins in first person shooters. In an MMO for instance, that is a different story, which explains why so many 16 year olds make female characters with big personalities. And with 16 year old boys, I mean all men and some women, basically everybody. But in the shooter, all you see is your gun and your hands. The rest is for the other players to enjoy. Now that being said, there is some brag value to these skins. And just knowing that you look badass because your beard is waving in the wind as you charge forward. But that's about it. Anyway, some other types of loot that we can currently collect are emotes, a death trap waiting to happen. Setting off your emote in midst of battle is about the worst way to die. The most embarrassing at least, and funny. There are the victory poses for the group picture, highlight intros for the play of the game, voice lines to annoy both your own team and the enemy team, icons and sprays. Now when it comes to sprays, I'm a simple man. I only use one spray ever, and it has been that way since I started playing the game. Yakimon, aka The Leak. You've seen him. Someone even gifted me the plushie. I'm going to leave it right there. He's so awesome. I think he's stealing attention right now. I need to be careful because sometimes my camera thinks that that is a face. I have a solution, give me a second. <laughs> Anyways, I'm getting a little carried away here. Back to the topic. All those that I just mentioned are the types of cosmetics that we have in Overwatch 1. But Blizzard already shared some new types of cosmetics that they're working on for Overwatch 2. Like weapon inspection animations. Yeah, that's a mouthful. And it is a very appropriate name because that's basically what it does. Your hero starts inspecting the weapon. It basically is a variant of the knife spinning that they do in Valorant or CSGO. It's like a virtual tool for Overwatch. The second one is weapon charms. Something we've seen in a lot of other shooters. They are basically little trinkets that you can hang on your weapon, like a keychain of kind. Another one that they already talked about are banners. Teresa already has a banner as an emote in Overwatch 1, but in Overwatch 2 everybody's getting banners. And they can plant them everywhere on the map, preferably on the payload, because some people seem to get lost at times. They don't find their way back to the payload. I think you all know who I'm talking about. And the final cosmetic they already discussed is actually more of an expansion of an existing cosmetic. Mythic skins. It's an extra tier of skins on top of epic and legendary but it is a huge step up because that skin will include customization special effects unique voice lines and all ship back so again all of the above is confirmed and should pop up in overwatch 2 maybe on release maybe later now in general with everything that they announced for overwatch 2 up to this point you can tell that they tried to raise the value for the player themselves either you can see the cosmetic while you're playing or the brag value is raised substantially now there are also a few types of cosmetics that they did 
didn't necessarily announce, but that we learned about through other channels. A few weeks ago, Blizzard did a survey asking people about the prices that they're setting for cosmetics. It ended up being a bit of a shocker because some of those prices were rather high. But Blizzard addressed it. I made two videos on the whole topic. Go check them out if you need to learn more. Now in that same survey, they also mentioned nameplates. Another feature that we've seen in different games. And which allows you to kind of customize the way your profile looks. That could be in the intro screen, it could be in the end screen, whatever. Now if these other games are an indication, they could go even further. And they could also give you custom hero avatars, borders, animations. Apex does a lot of those. How about some titles that are tied into your achievements like World of Warcraft does? But wait, I don't want to go into the list of things they could do just yet. Give me another minute because the second thing they also mentioned in that survey are souvenirs. Let me do it this way. Souvenirs. And my friends, I have no freaking clue what souvenirs are. Well, I know in real life, if you look at the definition for a souvenir, it is a thing that is kept as a reminder of a person, a place, or an event. So that could either be the Eiffel statue when you went to Paris, or it could be someone's ear. Wait. Are we going to be collecting parts of enemy players now? I know some heroes would definitely do that. But for the sake of it being Overwatch, let's just say that it might be things that are tied into uh, events. Like a Christmas ornament or a carved pumpkin. The thing is, however, what do you do with these souvenirs? Where do you place them? Where do you keep them? So many questions. First of all, we need to wait if that souvenir pops up again because they might never mention it again. And if they do, we'll find out what it is, I think. So my friends, we have the old, we have the confirmed new, and we have the um, hinted at new. Yeah, but it is time to dive into the unknown. Which types of cosmetics have been done by other games? Other first person shooters or other Blizzard games? Blizzard tends to copy features from one game to the other. That's why I keep mentioning Blizzard games. Well, let's start with the obvious one. Weapon skins. What if we get separate skins for weapons? And we can match them with skins to our own liking. The drawback is, however, that at that point, you lose user awareness of their own skin completely. On the other hand, it is a popular request. Another one, recolors of skins. We've had a few of them in the Remix events and in the Overwatch League. But what if we get recolor options for every single skin in the game? Maybe templates or they let us pick the colors ourselves. Those templates could be Overwatch League team. I've said this in previous videos but I really think that this might happen. They definitely have the tech now and maybe not at release but let's just say that I'm convinced that they talked about it internally. But moving on to heirlooms. Apex has heirlooms. They basically replace your melee with the weapon that is appropriate for your hero. It is in a way an evolution of the CSGO and Valorant knives. Now in a way, mythic skins have that same kind of lore value that the heirlooms do in Apex. And they are also quite expensive. So maybe they'll just replace them with melee weapons. The Junker Queen has her knife as a melee weapon. It is part of her kit. And maybe they'll allow us to replace that with a, a fork. Yeah, maybe. That's kind of top of mind. Maybe a boomerang. Okay, that's even worse. But you know what I mean. Now while we're talking about weapons. We know that we're getting those weapon inspection animations. But what if we could change the effects on our weapons? Maybe a different color of Tesla Ray for Winston. Or have Moira spray flowers instead of that weird yellow mist. What is that actually? They could also dive into all kinds of accessories like backpacks, wings, sunglasses, trails that follow where you walked and preferably only the Friendly team can see it. How about tabards? Or um, different dance moves? Yeah, I know, I know. At some point, all of that would just get really chaotic and, and just cheap. Another thing that not everybody is going to appreciate, but I would definitely like to see are pets. And again, only you can see your own pet. Maybe your teammates can see them. But it would be kind of fun. Seeing Narissa charge in, followed by her puppy. Or seeing that parrot on Anna's corsair skin. Ganymede following Bastion. Come on. But on the other hand, you run into the risk of them getting in the way and maybe they'll confuse you. Is that a turbulent? No, that's a Rissa's dog. Never mind. Now, if they ever do a bigger map like we've talked about in the past, maybe there'll be mounts and then they'll add mount cosmetics. And there's stuff like toys. Quite like the banner is stuff that you can drop and then they get a custom animation. Some nice effects. Man, I love talking about all these ideas. But I do realize that there's a lot of risk involved. And as such, that they are very, very, very unlikely. Something that is more likely, just to get us back into the realm of the possible, is that they allow you to kind of customize your own interface. In Apex, for instance, you can choose which stats are being shown on your profile. There's custom loading screens, there's custom music, custom announcers. Sorry, Athena. Now, they could even go as far as letting you choose your own death icon. Maybe custom ping sounds, emoticons for the chat. Although, now that I'm saying out loud, with our community, well, with some people in our community, that might be a bad idea. And let me round this all up with one final idea. Something that I actually think might happen. Now, I'm going to say more. 
something I think will happen. Tokens. This could either be just simple XP tokens, where your XP gets a boost. It could also be double XP tokens. Those would allow you to progress faster for let's say an hour. Paladins has a token that allows everybody in your team to pick any skin, even if you don't have it unlocked. Those kinds of ideas are neat. And that's basically the conclusion, there's still so much that they could do. So much that they can think of. But, as with anything, there are limits. And those limits might be technical, but it could also be their vision that is restrictive. You always want your game to feel like a decent product. Like quality wise, you don't want to kind of throw everything at it. Let me give you an example. A lot of people talk about the customizations that you get in Team Fortress. Because you can make any skin you want with it on the store and people can use it. Which is an awesome idea. But for Overwatch, that team wants to keep creative control over everything that goes out under the label Overwatch. Let's not forget that they have a lot of deals going on. But people that make merchandise for instance. So again, there are limits. Things like that are sadly not possible in Overwatch. I don't see them happening. Ever. But that being said, what do you think they should put in there? What have I missed? Let me know in the comments. For now, however, that was it. Thank you very much for watching. See you during my streams on twitch.tv slash or in my next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.